Okay, in this exercise, there are um, two parts um, to this question. So first you need to write a balanced equation for the stoichiometric combustion of propane. And I've given you the chemical um, formula for propane, it's C3H8. And then you had to determine the air-to-fuel ratio um, for stoichiometric combustion of propane um, in terms of mass. Okay, um, stoichiometric means... Um, uh, exactly the right amount of fuel and air, so um, for complete combustion. Okay, so first we need to start off by writing a balanced equation. And if you remember, I said the way to do this, I gave you a method to do this. I said, assume you have one unit of fuel, okay, so that's our fuel, which is propane, C3H8. And we're going to react that with some air, but we don't know how much X. And I've written it this way, because remember that... Um, for every unit of oxygen, because oxygen is 21% of air and nitrogen is 79%. For every one unit of oxygen, we're bringing along with us 79 over 21 or 3.76 units of nitrogen, okay? So that's why it's written like that. Go back and look at the lecture if you, if you can't remember how I got uh, this bit. So we've got one unit of fuel reacting with um, some units of oxygen. We don't know how much. That's what we're going to work out. Um, that'll give us some... Um, uh, carbon dioxide, we don't know how much, some units of, um, and some units of water, but we don't know how much. So we've got X, Y, and Z. We've got three unknowns. And to ensure that this balance is, obviously we've got X times 79 over 21 nitrogen, which is going to come through completely unreacted uh, for the purposes of this. Okay, so how do we work this out? So remember I said to construct a table with your reactants on one side, okay, what we're going to react together. And our products on the other side, what's our product of combustion, okay? And we do this construct a row for each element. Uh, we could have one for nitrogen as well, actually, but um, because we're saying that nitrogen doesn't react, um, I don't think there's much point. Okay, so we've got carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So we can start populating this table. We know that there are three carbons on this side. We know that there are eight hydrogens. Um, so how many oxygens are there? Well, there are two X uh, from this bracket and if we go on to the product side how many carbons on this side well there's y uh, carbons how many hydrogens well there's 2z from the water and how many oxygens there's 2y from the carbon oxide and z from the water so there's 2y plus z and now if you remember we've got um, uh, three unknowns and three equations because obviously these are equal and we can start going around to solve it so y is equal to three um, Z is equal to 4, so now we can work out how many oxygens uh, we should have on this side, which is 10, by finding 2Y plus Z. We've got 10 on this side, so we must have 10 on this side, therefore X is 5. And if we plug X, Y and Z back into our equation at the top, uh, we can now find that we've got a, a nicely balanced um, equation. Okay. So that's the first part of the question. Um, the second part, you're asked to find the uh, air-to-fuel ratio in terms of mass. So, if you remember, to do this, to go um, from volumes or from moles uh, into mass, we need to know the um, atomic masses of each of the elements. So these you can read off the um, periodic table, or you might um, know them from memory. So carbon is 12 grams per mole, hydrogen is 1, oxygen is 16, and nitrogen is uh, 14. And just to remember that this is for an oxygen atom, not for an oxygen molecule, so you need to be aware of that. Okay, so what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the um, the air-to-fuel ratio. So um, we, we set those opposite each other, and we can get rid of the, neglect the products for this thing, we're just considering uh, the reactants. Um, so we put those, bring those down here, and now we simply substitute in the atomic um, masses into each of these, uh, for each element in this in this um, uh, formula here, so we've got three times twelve for the carbon, eight times time one for the hydrogen, and so on. Remember that um, obviously um, one oxygen atom weighs sixteen grams, so you've got two of them here. So don't forget two times that. And then if you if you uh, pull all that into your calculator and then factor it out, you end up with a air to fuel ratio of um, fifteen point six to one. So in other words, you need around about um, 15 and a half kilograms of air 
uh, for one kilogram of um, propane for complete combustion.